forever. This is the word that has been proclaimed to you. Reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord. The apostles said to the Lord, <clears throat> Increase our faith. The Lord replied, If you have faith the size of a mustard seed, you would say to this mulberry tree, Be uprooted and planted in the sea, and it would obey you. Who among you would say to your servant who has just come in from plowing, or tending sheep in the field, come here immediately and take your place at table. Would he not rather say to him, prepare something for me to eat, put on your apron and wait on me while I eat and drink. You may eat and drink when I am finished. Is he grateful to that servant because he did what he was commanded? So should it be with you. When you have done all that you have been commanded, say, we are unprofitable servants. We have done what we were obliged to do. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Today's uh, gospel is clearly divided into two parts. The first part begins with the petition of the apostles to Jesus to increase their faith. Faith, as we know, is the first of the three theological virtues. It is the one, the greatest for, is one of the greatest forces in the world. It is one of the two necessary conditions for our salvation. We say that faith is a virtue by which we firmly believe all the truths that Jesus has revealed. Perhaps the most important aspect of faith is not what we actually believe, but rather our motive in believing what we do. Faith concerns itself with many things we cannot perceive with our senses. It concerns itself with the mystery of the Holy Trinity, the Incarnation, and the true presence of Jesus and the Blessed Sacrament. It concerns itself with all the revealed doctrine which Jesus was teaching here on earth. But the most important thing is that we believe in those truths because Jesus taught them to, the, taught them to us. We believe in Jesus, that he is the Son of God, the second person of the most blessed Trinity, through God and through men. Once we believe in Jesus and his divinity, then it is only a short step to believe in the doctrines that he gave us. Jesus, as God, is all truthful. He can neither deceive nor be deceived. This is the greatest possible motive for our faith. The apostles, as faithful followers of Jesus, were learning the importance of faith. For this reason, the request to Jesus to increase their faith, an ordinary person finding out the identity of Jesus and his great power might request some temporal favor of him. He might ask for good health of some material possession. But the apostles had passed this stage in their spiritual development. They knew that the spiritual gifts were, were far greater than the material ones. Therefore, the request for faith. Jesus, in answering them, first was able to compare faith to the, to the mustard seed, 
a seed that is extremely small in size. <coughs> this comparison is a good one. Faith has a small beginning in our souls. It first comes to, to each one of us when the waters of baptism are poured over our heads. It begins to grow when we, re when we reach the age of reason and begin to believe things using our own intellectual powers. Jesus continues, If you have faith the size of a mustard seed, you will say to this mulberry tree, Be uprooted and planted into the sea, and it will obey you. The mulberry tree was a very large one. It will take a, a great force to uproot one and hurl into the sea. But Jesus was using such a figure of speech because he knew his listeners. It was the custom of the Jews and other Eastern people to speak in the figure of speech and to use a very vivid terms. Jesus had in mind to convey, convey of them the, mess, the power of faith. Jesus wanted the apostles to realize how very dependent men is upon a loving God. God has given us our, our very lives and everything that we have or possess. Without Him, we can do nothing. But with Him, there is nothing that we cannot do. There is an old story that a, that a fly resting on the back of an elephant. The elephant was crossing over a wooden bridge. The fly said to the elephant, My, didn't we shake that, that bridge? We can, we can compare the fly to men and the elephant to God. It was the elephant who did most of the shaking of the bridge. Whenever we accomplish something worthwhile, it is to God that we must give most of the credit. We can say that through faith, Jesus is inviting each one of us to undertake careless work, to undertake seemingly impossible tasks. With his help, through faith, the impossible become possible and the difficult becomes easy. In the second part of today's gospel, Jesus tells of the servant who comes from plowing and tending the sheep. The master does not tell him to sit down and take it easy. Instead, he bids the servant to prepare his supper and wash the dishes. Jesus is intimating that the master is not a, is not a slave driver, for the servant is only doing his duty what is expected of him. We can compare the master and this parable to Jesus and the servant to all Christians, clergy and laity alike. Jesus is telling us that the servant's work, that the Christian's work is never finished. We are constantly to spread about the gospel of Jesus and this we can do in many different beautiful ways. Jesus then is laying down the, the duties of Christians. First, they must believe. They must have a strong faith in Him. Secondly, they must work continually to spread Jesus' gospel and His divine teachings. Through faith and hard work, many seemingly impossible tasks will be accomplished. Jesus will be working with us and through us. Through faith and good works, we can bring about the salvation of our own souls and the souls of many others. Um, saying together. <clears throat>